when we're reading the word, and that's assuming you're reading the word, when you're reading the word, I always just ask this question, what am I learning about who God is mm. from this? So I think we are kind of taught to read the word, but then we're taught to look for how I should be changing or who I should be mm. or how I should be living my life. We look at it as kind of like a rules book instead of what am I learning about God? So for example, when it says, children, do not lie to your parents or do not lie one to another. I'm not learning, oh, it's bad if I lie. What I'm learning is that God is the essence of truth, right? right. So it shifts it. So now I'm not feeling this, I'm but, not feeling this condemnation, right. right? But rather I'm learning, oh my gosh, God is truth. And then I can ask myself, like, why is that attribute important to me? Mm. Like, look, we live in a world that's lying to us. Yes. We live in a world that I'm not really sure what to believe. There's only one thing I can count on, and that is, is that God is truth. So then I'm going to take it a step further, and I'm going to say, then what is that? What do I discover about my design? Because if you and I are designed in the image of God, what I'm discovering now is I have been designed with the ability to walk in truth. So if I'm somebody who struggles with lying, now I've gotten a different approach. I'm not like, oh, I got to stop lying. Oh, I stop lying. I got to stop lying. Because that's frustrating. It's I like trying that. to stop eating chocolate. <laughs> like, I got just one more M&M. I just one more M&M. I got to stop eating these M&Ms, right? <laughs> but instead, I'm like, you know, I'm going to focus on God's attribute of truth and the beauty of that. God, teach me your truth. I want to come into the knowledge of your truth. I thank you that I'm designed to walk in truth, to walk mm -hmm. in illumination, that you have put it in me that I'm walking. So now I'm just coming into this alignment of my God possibility in Christ, and there's no condemnation in that. Like I'm speaking to myself from the side of victory. Mm -hmm. I'm not spanking myself from the side of guilt and condemnation. Right. Um, so I think the first step is when you're reading the Word of God, ask yourself, what do I learn about who God is? Love that. Um, and what do I discover about me? So two things. When I when I used to teach, I taught high school, Sunday school years ago when I lived in it, like literally like 20 years ago. And I would have the girls um, put two lines down, um, down their paper. So there was three columns and I, we would read a verse and I would say, what do we learn about God? What do we learn about the tendency of the flesh? It, well, the tendency is for us to lie, right? right? And what do I learn about my possibility? Well, the possibility is that I, I have the, the ability to walk in truth and in transparency and in total honesty and with integrity and an honorable way. I learn all of that from that one verse that says, do not lie one to another, that we all learned when we were in, you know, three in cubbies right? and, and felt the sting of condemnation in it, right? So same thing about, you know, when we teach about purity or not having sex, like how are we presenting that? Are we, are we giving our students a hunger um, for purity because God is pure? And have they discovered the beauty of living for serving a pure God? Mm. You know? Yeah. So I think sometimes we put the cart before the horse and saying like, I need you to embrace the action before you have an understanding of the activator in our life. Right. Now that's so, a great point. And I think a lot of it has to do with culture becoming more perverse, obviously, and more mm -hmm. secular, but that yeah. also being kind of the church flirting with culture yeah. a little bit too much to yeah. the point where it's like, I don't know which side you're on mm -hmm. uh, unless I really, you know, harp in on it and ask you questions. And if I was just talking to a friend uh, yesterday about this because she just recently came back to her faith, praise God, praise God, and was talking about her experiences, you know, we had a convo and she was saying that she would ask questions and the pastor would kind of like, and her small group leader and stuff like that would kind of be evasive about it and not uh, answer the, the tough questions that she was having because, and that made her feel like she didn't have anywhere she can go to. And I was encouraging her that like, God loves your questions, yeah. you know, like God wants yeah, to go answer to those word. through his word. Absolutely. And now she's on fire. She's reading the word every Good night. For her. And, you know, you talk about once all those feelings, you know, about the and all these feelings of, um, you know, family issues and stuff. But once you tap into the word, you know, she told me that all those things were gone. She would, mm -hmm. she would leave a chapter of the Bible mm -hmm. and she would be feeling like everything has just uh, been delivered mm -hmm. and, and, and erased in peace. And she yes. wants that every night and she wants to know how she can continue growing in her faith and mm -hmm. stuff like that through mm -hmm. the word. And that's, I think that's the disconnect between church and the word is, is wild. And we used to mm -hmm. see probably in your uh, younger days where people were bringing church, uh, Bibles to churches yes. and now it's on the phone, it's on the yeah. screen. Well, and I'll take that a step further and say the disconnect between the word and his character is mm. very big as well, because a lot of times it's possible to read his word, know his word, 
and understand. I mean, I mean, the the disciples walked with Jesus along the road to Emmaus, and they missed the revelation. Right. So it's even possible to be walking in the word, but still miss the revelation of his character. That's the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law is found in his heart. Mm. The letter of the law is found in the knowledge. And so I can quote all kinds of scriptures all day long, but if I don't have an understanding of the nature of God, the heart of God, then all I'm getting is an understanding of what it looks like versus what it is. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And so there's a living, breathing character attribute of Christ that lives and breathes inside of us. And a lot of us never get past acting like Jesus to actually become like Jesus. I like that you said that because like you said in the book and you kind of said earlier, you can kind of fake the funk. Yeah, fake it. You can you can fake it, you yeah. can fi- you can learn how to act like a Christian. I don't do this, I don't do that or yep. you post the things that look right and stuff like that. And that's why I really think that people have flocked to this show because I've been really preaching this message about like naked Christianity, mm-hmm. which is kind of just vulnerable, just yeah. open, just like here are my struggles, here is how I know I can yeah. get through it through God and here's yeah. how God is working on me and it just really brings people into this place of re- relating in Instead of mm-hmm. feeling like they can't come to church, you know, because they don't meet this standard, you know, or they can't do mm-hmm. this because they're not walking in the way that they perceive that they mm-hmm. should be walking at, in that f- moment of their faith journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, one of the things I say in the book and I say a lot is the spirit can do better than that. Mm. You know, so I've learned how to not say the things that's going through my head out loud because it wouldn't be godly or wouldn't be kind or or I've learned how to tolerate people who are quote unquote intolerable, but that's not the best of Jesus in me. Right. You know, the, the Holy Spirit in me can do better than that. God can bring me to a place where I'm not just acting tolerant, but I actually am able to sit and I'm patient and I'm compassionate with that person. That's the spiritual potential that I walk in. Mm. But a lot of us are like, oh, I've, you know what? But praise God, I just didn't say anything. And I'm like, no, praising God, that's a good start. But yeah. but the greater potential is you didn't think it either. Right. And then you talk about that when you first started seeing clients that were emotional and over the top. Yeah. And you're like, suck it up, sister. Yeah, <laughs> you know? <my> God. <laughs> but, yes. But you ask God to uh, change your heart in that and to mm-hmm. have more compassion. And I agree with that because uh, just on the last episode that we did, I was talking to my mother in law who uh, has the Subi project mm-hmm. and we were over here just talking about poverty in America. And I was, you know, kind of being open and honest and saying, I don't have a lot of compassion for if you're, you're poor in America, just cause there's so many opportunities and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But then I started thinking, you know, listening to the, to the, to the videos clips. And I was like, that's, that doesn't really show compassion, but that, that was tr- my truth in that moment. And I was yeah. like, you know, I gave it to God. And I was like, you know, if, if I need to have that compassion, give that to me yeah. uh, for people that have poverty in America. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, mm-hmm. that's obviously um, nobody wants to have poverty anywhere, but right. you know, when you have it anyway. Right. So, uh, and I love what you said about in Christ, because I even wrote this quote down from your book where you say, in fact, many of us try to discover our identity and our calling, but our identity is only found in Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I think that really taps into the character of God. Mm-hmm. And that's when we become our our best selves. And yes. that's when we're able to tap into mm-hmm. the calling and the anointing even more mm-hmm. once we become more like the character of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I and that you, you know, you mentioned earlier how we're up against the narrative of the culture and the narrative of the culture is so much about your calling. And I was, I was texting with a pastor the other day and I asked him how church was and he told me how many people they had and he gave me a number. And I said, what was the weight of the spirit? Right. So I was kind of challenging him to think about a different way to measure the success than of the, the room, than right? The attendance. Like wow. what was Good so for you. instead of the number of people that attended, what how did the spirit weigh? What was, what the, was the weight of the Holy Spirit in that day? Wow. And this guy, I'm pretty sure it was probably heavy because I know him very well. And he was like, uh, oh, it was heavy, you yeah. know? <laughs> right. So like was so, he so he was just focusing on the wrong thing? No, I mean it wasn't necessarily wrong. I just was I was just curious. To, I, to yeah. me it didn't mean anything that he threw a number at me. Right. You know, I understand that. Like I you know, I, it does show progress in the spirit and all that stuff, but I was more interested in going, but what was the spirit weighing? Right. Was he a thousand pounds? Was he ten thousand pounds? Mm. You know, knowing that the Shekinah glory is the weightiness of the of the Lord, it that it brings a heaviness in the room, the heaviness that knocks the priests to the yeah. ground and they can't stand to perform their duty. Right. So I was just, it was kind of just a pun between him and I. And I was like, but what was the weight of the spirit? 